Welcome to the first update for the Fleming Avenue Garden. It's been about a month and a half since the garden video, and much has changed. This time, I'd like to feature some of the pollinators that visit and live in the garden. One of the great things about planting native garden is that you attract so much life. In the first garden video, these elegant Clarkia were just a couple of inches high. Now they're in flower and attracting pollinators. The flowers look a little bit like bow ties. The moth here is a white line sphinx moth, and I think it's quite pretty. It hovers like a hummingbird, and like a hummingbird, it has a very long tongue, which you can see coming out of its head here. This is a woolly blue curls, one of the prettiest plants that I know of. Here's a close-up to show what I mean. Only problem is I can't show you how it smells, which is wonderful. Near the woolly blue curls is a foothill penstemon. You'll sometimes see bees crawling into the trumpet-shaped flowers, which are pretty nice. The blue flowers in the foreground are blue flax. In the background, you'll see some yellow flowers, gumweed. You'll see close-ups in a few seconds. At the end of the pan, the plant in the foreground is California phacelia, a plant whose flowers grow in helical coils. More later. This is blue flax. Native peoples use the seeds in cooking and the stems of the plant to make rope and string. Gumweed gets its name for the material that protects the immature flowers till they're ready to be pollinated. Bees and butterflies are attracted to bum gumweed. Here is a leaf cutter bee and a sweat bee. Blue-eyed grass isn't a grass at all. It's an iris. But given some years, it does fill in an area with green grass-like leaves. It gets to be four or five inches tall, and in spring, well, you've never seen grass so pretty. Baby blue eyes is another flower that grows in this part of the garden. Related to baby blue eyes is five spot, which you can see here. The other flower is Brewer's Clarkia, a relative of the elegant Clarkia, which we saw earlier. These helical coils of the California phacelia, well, they attract lots of pollinators, mainly bees. And at the end of the pan across the garden was bladder pod. And here are the flowers of the plant. And this is an egg case of a praying mantis. I'm keeping an eye out for when they hatch out. Should be neat. Also in the front yard is Pine Hill Flannel Bush. It's listed by the state of California as rare and by the federal government as endangered. It's a member of the Mallow family. Now, the bright orange flowers are quite beautiful, aren't they? The next few photos are taken in the backyard. The left foreground is single leaf onion. On the onion, here we have a painted lady butterfly and a green mason bee. Elegant Clarkia, some chick lupins, and sticky monkey flower. Next is a slightly different view that shows globe gilia, a better view of the chick lupin, and also visible is yarrow in the foreground. In this next photo is Dudley Aviron's Hasei, a rare succulent. In the wild, it grows out on the Channel Islands. Even though it's rare, in my yard it seems easy to grow and I've propagated several new plants. In the background, another plant native to the Channel Islands is the island bush poppy. 
Thanks for joining me in this tour of my garden. In a couple of months, I should have another episode with lots of new flowers. Two different California fuchsias, six different buckwheats, flowers of the buckeye tree, two tritillea, several calicordus, golden bush, California aster, a rare thistle, a narrow tar plant, and two different milkweeds. See you then.